sister and my brother. Praise God, Sister Kathy and Brother Dova. Thank you, Lord God, to all of the saints of the Most High God. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank him because he has blessed us. And he continues to bless us. In spite of what the, what the enemy, I think my mouth is big enough. I, I really don't need the mic. In spite of what the enemy is trying to do. You heard what I say, what he's trying to do. God is yet in the blessed business. Hallelujah, and we give him praise tonight. My husband asked me, he said, what are we going to minister on? And I said, I really don't know. But on Monday morning, the Lord gave me what he wanted us to speak on. The, the, the three things. What are you hearing? What are you seeing? And then what are you saying? So tonight, I thank God for being able to minister on what are you hearing? Tomorrow night, my husband will be ministering on what are you seeing? And on Friday night, we will minister on what are you saying? Amen. I thought about one scripture, and even as we were coming here tonight, uh, or this evening, the Lord gave, took me in another direction. So I always have to be obedient to what he's saying. Amen. I have to speak what he gives to me. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you for this night. Father, we thank you for being able to stand before these people and declare your word. I pray, God, that you would touch me. Anything that is not right, remove it even in this moment, God. Let everything that I speak come from you, God. Let it touch the heart of your people. Let them receive your word, God, that they may go forth in you, desiring more of you, God. More of you, Lord. Being attentive to what you are saying as you speak these three nights. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 20, reading from the King James Version. And the word of God said, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Now Jehoshaphat was a descendant of Asa, who was a descendant also of David. But then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea. On this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazatma, which is Engada. The word said, there came some, not one, but there came some that told Jehoshaphat that there's a great multitude that's coming against you. We have got to be careful to who we're listening to. Many times, people will come and tell you something. <coughs> the enemy will use people 
to cause distraction. The enemy will use people to get you off course. Even though you know God and you trust God, but there will be times when people will come and tell you things that will cause you to really stand and wonder, am I really traveling the right road? Verse 3 said, and Jehoshaphat feared. He feared. Uncertain as to what the outcome would be. But he didn't stay in that place of fear. For the word said, and set himself to seek the Lord. See, sometimes we get scared. But we refuse to seek God. We get over our head sometimes. Then we go to man and we, we want to ask them, what do they think? We go to man and ask him, well, what would you do? If you were in the situation like I'm in. Right. If there was enemies coming up against you. What would you do? But Jehoshaphat didn't do that. He didn't allow what was told to him. To cause him to stay in a place of fear. The word said. And set himself. Or he set his face. To seek the Lord. Right. When you set your face to seek God. When you determine that. That nobody else can help you like God oh, can. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I know in whom I believe. Right. And I'm persuaded yeah. that he's able yeah. to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I might yeah. ask of faith. Jehoshaphat sought the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. See, Jehoshaphat knew something about God because the previous chapters told us that Jehoshaphat was one that was humble in spirit. He was one that had a relationship with the Lord. See, a, a lot of people are religious, but they don't have a relationship. A lot of people go to church, but they don't have a relationship with God. Or they would tell you, oh, I went to church on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, what did you get out of it? I don't know. The choir sung good. The preacher preached good. What did he talk about? I don't know. But everybody was jumping and shouting, and they were having a good time. But what did you get out of it? What did you hear from the preacher? What did you receive from the man of God or the woman of God? What is it? That you went in with expectation of receiving from God. See, a lot of times we go to church just to be going with no expectation of what God is going to do when we get in the house. A lot of times we don't even worship God at home. We wait till we get to church and we sit there like, a, oh well, thank you Lord God. We won't open our mouth. We won't do anything. We just sit right there. But if you worship God in your home, you'll worship him when you come to church. If you praise him while you're at home, you won't mind praising him when you come to church. If you praise him when you're up, you don't mind praising him when you're down. Because you know that he had you up and he's not going to let you stay down. Hallelujah. He'll lift you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Deuteronomy 4, 29. Say, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. It's not that he's hiding. Go ahead, so. But if you call on him, he'll answer you. He is a prayer answering God. He said, if thou seek him with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation. And all these things are come upon thee. Even in the latter days. If thou turn to the Lord thy God. And shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Merciful God. He will not forsake thee. Neither destroy thee. Nor forget the covenant of thy fathers. Which he swear unto them. All right. See Jehoshaphat knew. He knew about God. He knew what the word 
word said. Hallelujah. So the word said, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Right. Or oh, they came together. See, sometimes we feel like we've got to just do things all by ourselves. But the word said, if one could put a flight to a thousand, just think how many two can do. If we come together corporately, we can do great things. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Oh, there are times when, when we are overwhelmed that we got to cry out to the Lord Amen. and ask help. God, I need you to help me. Yes, or oh, what did the blind man say? Help! Yes, <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Many times we are blinded spiritually. Yes, sir. And we've got to cry out to God. Yes, ask him to help us. Yes, he said, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Oh, that, that's, that's a word that we as the United Holy Church, we need to come together and seek the Lord. Oh, we got to put all these the degrees and all of these titles and all of these positions aside, and we've got to come together and seek God. Oh, if we want to see a change, we've got to seek God. It's not about Bishop Riding. It's not about the others that are on the bishop's uh, council or anything, but it's all about God. If we need help, we need to know where we can find him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The fifth verse said, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. God can do anything but fail. And here Jehoshaphat is reminding God of the promises that he made to the children of Israel. Not that God had forgotten. But sometimes the people that are, are, are with us, we've got to let them know the God that we know. Uh, sometimes we got to let them know that we don't call on, on Harry Krishna. We don't call on Father Divine. We don't call on Daddy Grace. We call on the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. For there is no power but the power of Almighty God. There is none that is able to withstand him. I don't care who they might be. There is none that is mightier than God. Hallelujah. He said, art not thou our God? <laughs> our God. Hallelujah. Who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. And they dwell therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, if when evil cometh upon us, and just as sure as we're in here tonight, evil will come upon all of us. I don't care how long you've been saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized, evil will come. Paul said, when I desired to do good, evil was always present. Thank you, God. If when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence. For thy name is in this house. Thank God that God's name is in love, joy, and peace. Hallelujah. And cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear. And not only will you hear us, God, but you're going to help. You're going to help us. You're going to rescue us. You're going to restore us, God. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you. Don't see it right now, but thank you. Thank you, God. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade. See, God got his hand stretched out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Though they come, 
but they, the Lord will not let them come in and take over. If they come in and take over, it's because of us. We allow them to come and take over. Thank you, God. Whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. What a mighty God we serve. That even in our trials and our tribulations, he will not allow the enemy to destroy us. He, the word said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, Jesus said, but I have come. Even in the Old Testament, this is just a shadow of what was to come in the New Testament. Ah, uh, The enemy was working all the time. But God was still at work. Hallelujah. Jesus was right there when the creation was. Hallelujah. And because he was there, he already knew what the enemy was going to do. He said, behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession. They are coming to take us out of Jesus. Your possession, yeah. that which you've given unto us Amen. as an inheritance, that's what they think they're going to do. Jesus. They are plotting yeah. and they're scheming. Jesus. I want to let you know tonight in here, somebody, the enemy is plotting and scheming about some things that he's going to do in your life. But you got to stand on the word of God. Right. You got to let God know, God, I know that you have not forgotten. But I just want to remind you, Lord, that you said you never leave me, nor would you forsake me. That you will be with me even to the end of the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company. Oh, yeah. Jesus. It's a great, large company. It's many of them. It's not just a few. It's a whole heap of lot, as the kids say. But there is no army that is greater than the Lord himself. Right. Hallelujah. I don't care if there's 10,000, even that one God. Hallelujah. The God that we serve is able to destroy every one of them. Thank you, God. This great company that cometh against us, neither know us what to do. God, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to do it. But one thing about it, our eyes are upon you. We're not looking to nobody else but you, God. Hallelujah. We can go to the throne of grace and we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. Our eyes are upon you, God. Our focus is upon you. We're not looking at the problem. We're looking at the problem solver. Right. We're not looking at our situation. Yeah. But we're looking at the one that is able to turn the situation around. Yeah. Yeah. Our eyes yeah. are upon thee. Yeah. And I, 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 I like the scripture that uh, Pastor Myrick read. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. Yes. Yes. No matter what you might be going through. Right. Hallelujah. God will give you peace in the midst of your storm. Yes. Oh, you don't have to wait till the storm is over. Yes. Hallelujah. He'll give you peace while you're going through the storm. Yes. Many of us. When the storms come, wow. we sit up and we try to watch and see what's going to happen. What is the storm going to do? But you know what I do? I said, okay, God, if you up, why should I stay up? If you're watching over me, why should I stay up? I, I can't keep myself, but you can. You know everything that's going to happen. So, God, I put it in your hand. Oh, we got to learn how to put our situations, our circumstances, our problems. We've got to learn how to put it all in God's hand. Thank you, God. Put it in his hand. Oh, the song say, I can depend on God. I can depend on God. 
God. Through the storm, through the rain, through sickness and pain. I can depend on God. See, I can't depend on myself. Because I get weak. I get weary. But he doesn't. So if he doesn't, why should I worry about anything? Jehoshaphat. He did something that a lot of a lot of leaders won't even do. He acknowledged it. All right. He said, We don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. We can't fight this battle, God. We don't know how to do it. We don't even have strength enough to do it. We don't have the power to do it. We don't have the manpower to do it. We don't know what to do. But even if we don't know what to do, we still know the one who to look to. Thank you, God. 13 verse here. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. All of them stood before God, seeking God, looking to God, looking unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. The one who wrote the book. Hallelujah. The one that wrote out our lives. The one who did the, the blueprint for each one of us. The one who wrote out the purpose and the plans for us. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. He told it to Jeremiah, but I want to let you know he's telling the same thing to you tonight. He knows the plan that he has for you. Oh, our plans sometimes get in the way of God's plan. Because we're determined we're going to do what we think we should do. Instead of saying, God, whatever your plan is for my life, let it be. Let it be, God. Because I want to do your will. I want to walk in your way, Lord God. Hallelujah. When we have placed it all in the hand of God, as Jehoshaphat did. Yes, yes. On the, in the, the 14th verse said, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the middle of the congregation, in the presence of the congregation. No better feeling it is than to have the presence of the Lord come in the midst of us, O oh God. For the word said, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Not just a little bit, but fullness of joy. When you think about a glass that you're going to pour something to drink in, when there's just a little bit in, sometimes it doesn't quench your thirst. But when you have a glass full, Go ahead, man. you can just drink and drink and drink until that thirst is quenched. And when we're in the presence of God, we can just drink from that fountain that never runs dry. When we're in the presence of God, we can be saturated with his, with his presence. Hallelujah. We can saturate me, oh God. Let the rain fall from heaven. Thank you, God. Came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, he spoke the words, said unto them, Hearken ye, listen, Judah. All of you in Jerusalem. And you, King of Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord said. This is what God is saying to All you. Right. And this is what the Lord is saying to some of you tonight. Be not afraid. Nor be dismayed. Right. By the reason of this great multitude. Sometimes, uh, as the saying goes, when it rains, it pours. One thing after the other. In the home, 
things start breaking down. Amen. Amen. You fix one thing, something else needs fixing. You fix that, something else needs Amen. fixing. You, you get one situation uh, resolved and something else creeps in. Well, when you get to the house of God, Go ahead now. you think you got one problem solved. And then something else creeps in. Oh, yeah. Because the enemy has creeped in. Oh, yeah. And when he comes in, he comes in to cause havoc. Oh, yeah. He comes in to cause discord among the brethren. Yeah. He comes in to bring division. Yeah. But as the word came to Jehoshaphat, he said, don't, don't, don't be worried about this. Don't be troubled. Don't, don't let it trouble, trouble you at all. Because of what this great multitude is planning to do. He said, the Lord is saying. And to you that are sitting in here tonight. The battle. The battle. The battle is not yours. Pastor Mary. You're in a spiritual battle right now. The battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. But God's. You're going through a battle. And you're trying to fight the battle. But don't fight the battle. Stand back. Look at God. Trust God. Yes, yes, yes. Know that God will do what he has promised you that he will do. Yes, yes, yes. God is not slack concerning his promises. He's not slack. He doesn't go back on his word. God, you said in your word, this is what you would do for me, and I'm standing on your word tonight, God. I'm declaring and decreeing, Lord God, that whatever you promise me, God, I'm going to stand on your word and trust you until it comes to pass. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to let anybody turn me around. And even though it might look dark and dreary, and the burdens sometimes get hard to bear, but there is a God, hallelujah, that knows everything that you're going through. In the 17th verse, Jehaziel said, according to the word of the Lord, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Position yourself that even in the unexpected, even in things that are unforeseen, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See won't he bring you through. Oh, there, there, there will be some times when you're going to call on some prayer warriors. You're going to call on some intercessors so that you won't be in this by yourself. But even as they all seek God on your behalf, we are still going to wait and see God move. Because nobody can move like my God can. Nobody can do like the Lord can. Thank you, God. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them.